Jackalope, thank you for being here. Today, we're talking about probably the best innovation in all of Wingspan. The best innovation in all of Wingspan. Now, I couldn't have said it better myself. Wingspan is a game that both of us absolutely adore. Absolutely. So, what are your favorite parts or elements of Wingspan? If someone, you know, has not tried it yet. <laughs> What the, and they might have. Wingspan, which I've heard actually just came, had another reprint, so mm -hmm. it's available. Go get your copy if you haven't already. It's absolutely wonderful. Well on its way to, I heard, like 750,000 copies. Insane. That's insane. So what I love about Wingspan, first, first and foremost, is the art by the wonderful artists uh, Nat Natalia Rojas, Ana Maria... Martinez, Jamarillo, and Beth Sobel throughout all of these games, they picture the birds absolutely beautifully. It's a beautiful game to look mm -hmm. at. It's a beautiful game to play, too, because Elizabeth Hargrave has designed a game that flows so well. It's so impressive to build up your menagerie of birds. It's a, and little, just... it's a little engine building game that yeah. works. You start works layering well. birds down that then, you know, begin to chain and mm -hmm. bounce off of other uh, birds when you take actions, you know, at future steps. Yeah. Uh, with the Oceania expansion and the European expansion and a variety of other expansions on the way, I am sure they've confirmed sure. one for every continent, mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully some mythical birds sooner or later. Sooner uh, or we later. We are working on getting Quackalope into an orth ornithological study so that it can officially be part of Wingspan. Mm -hmm. We were downstairs playing this for fun. We were. One of the games that you picked just for... Quackalope playing a game for fun? Insane. What? It's insane. And you introduced me to what I think, what I would argue, is the very best thing that Wingspan has brought to the board gaming community. Right, right. Uh, and to be a hundred percent clear about this, this is an uh, not an official uh, related product. Well, it's in the box. It's in the box. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, let's go find it. Yeah. All we need gonna find it? to make this happen is a stack of cards. A stack of cards. What we're talking about today is the Wing Song app, which uh, is available on Apple Play, or the Apple Store or Google Play. And what it allows you to do is to um, take your Wingspan journey just that one step farther. You're going to want to have an internet connection when you're using this because it does use data. But basically, you, for example, have your Eurasian collared dove. You get out your Wing Song app, just Point it at the card, and this app has integrated nearly, except for the endangered species ones, because of the way right. that they harvest the audio, has integrated nearly every single song that exists in the bird world, in the birding yeah. world. I mean, this is like taking a birding book and just hitting, give me all of it. Give me all of it. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I get it. When I first mentioned this to Jesse when we were playing it earlier, his We paused face, and recorded every bird that was on the table. We did, we did. His face lit up. It was, uh, it so, was you're like a kid in a candy store. If you thought that this was a video on Wingspan, well, <laughs> you're right. It is. But if you're getting concerned now that the next five minutes of this video is just going to be us going through and listening to bird songs <laughs> and commenting on our opinions of them, well, you're also, you're also right. right. Yeah. Uh, this is, first off, I think such a cool thing that I don't think enough people are aware of. There are only 25 ratings on the app in the iOS App Store. Uh, and as someone that has grown into the birding hobby through games like Wingspan and mm -hmm. having a channel that is very aviary and duck forward. What? Yeah. Really? I uh, oh. am super excited about the fact that this will help introduce and bring sort of the uh, idea or the love of birding to right. space. And if right. you're watching this and you're interested, there'll be two links down below. One is over to my personal YouTube channel where we do non-board game stuff. Talk about things like birding, hiking, uh, losing weight, uh, depression, <laughs> and a whole mix of other ideas. So if you want to have wider conversations about this, swing over there and you know subscribe and pay attention. And also, of course, to the Wingsong app so we can show off and link and uh, you yep. know, 
direct people to experience this because I was really, really th thrilled. And with that, I think we're just going to listen to some audio. Yeah, that sounds good to me. The what do we got here? The common blackbird. So the common blackbird here, this bird was made world famous by the Beatles. It is primarily over in uh, Europe, it looks like. So maybe we don't even have blackbirds here in the States. And I am on low power. Oops, it's upside down. Maybe that's the issue. Ooh, it's complex. That's very complex. Here's the cool thing. Did you know, so there's been a lot of research that's been going into why birds sing in the morning. Okay. And part of the theory, part of the theory around why birds sing in the morning isn't actually like a mating call or a ritual. There, there's actually new studies being done that are indicating that birds are practicing their their love song, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they're singing is a way that you find a mate for right. the bird community, right? And because of the intricacies, the, the amount of modulation that has to happen in the vocal cords of the birds. Uh, and the amount of air they're releasing and how they're twisting their beaks and stuff right. to produce sounds like that. That makes sense. The morning time is, as far as we can tell, a practice time. And then mm. throughout the day, uh, the studies that have been done have shown that the whistle of the bird has improved uh, through the morning into the afternoon. That makes that makes perfect sense. Uh, for for you, those of you who don't know, it would be very few of you. I'm, I'm a singer. Singers, human singers, yep. definitely need practice yep. and are generally better in the morning <laughs> than they are in the afternoon. What do we have here? Give me some information. Uh, on it. We have here a gray butcher bird. Okay. If prayers, uh, if prey is too small or if prey is too large to eat whole, the butcher bird will store it and tear it into pieces. This bird is from the Oceania expansion. It is only <laughs> found in Australia. I can imagine a violent bird coming from Australia. Oh, wow. Ooh. <laughs> Very interesting. That's so cool. I, I think that I found as we as I've because sometimes they're so unique. They are so unique. Sometimes when I'm at home, I literally take out my Oceania expansion or the game and just t take some cards out and listen to bird song because they're that interesting. So this is Stellar's J. Uh, uh, naturalist George Stellar saw this bird on a Russian exploration to Alaska in 1741. Whoa. Now this is a, a sort of a blue jay with a, a dark sort of aesthetic to it. Yeah. Apparently uh, it's been seen in Alaska, which is very interesting. Let's hear what it sounds like. It's like oh. a chirping. Yeah. We're going again. Very piercing. Yeah. Very, very common in jays, actually, that piercing kind of sound. If you well, if you have blue jays near your house, you know what mm -hmm, I mean. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, a house wren. These are these are fun little chirpers. House wrens will remove eggs of other birds and will take over their nest. They have a natural range of all over North and South America. That little baby wren's gonna tear apart other families yeah like it it so literally brutal. it literally will eat the All eggs right, let's uh let's hear what the song of a murderer sounds like <laughs> you may have heard that outside your house because they are very common birds yeah It's like a series of shrill little yeah. I'm chirps. I'm interested to see if we oh, can find oh, a... Oh, there's something important here. I don't want to miss this one. A common loon. Oh, yes. No, you we don't never heard that. a loon sing. What they do is they'll typically sing early mornings or late evenings uh, out on giant lakes. So if you've ever been kayaking or out in like yep. Maryland or Maine or over anywhere here on the East Coast... These birds are so beautiful to hear them whistling out out there. Yeah, uh, when I I grew up in Massachusetts, so uh, sometimes we take vacations up into New Hampshire, yep. and uh, Loon Mountain was a place that we uh, typically went, and there uh, they my uh, it was a migratory spot for yeah. loons, so it, it was every year a whole host. 
in the lake there. Loon chicks spend the majority of their first week of life riding on their parents' back. Ooh. So let's give this a listen. This is a, this is a sound that I have been around in person. I remember my grandparents loving it. There we go. Mm. So eerie when you hear that in the real world. It is. It is. It evokes that kind of mist on mist on a lake feeling. Very common. Very common for that noise to actually be used in horror movies. Believe it or not. It's kind of create an eerie sense. There'll be another one here soon. Maybe. I assume so. so. The audio files that they're pulling from are usually like longer. You can actually leave it hovering for a while and it'll. Uh, and it'll play for a while, yeah. Yeah. Oh, So cool. Amazing. You see anything in there that you uh, uh standing out yeah, to? Yeah, I want to see uh, another Oceana bird because they tend to... Um, what do we got <clears> on here, though? This is going to be more. the black knotty. Uh, a large <clears throat> shoal of fish may attract a flock of 5,000 or more knotties. Whoa. And this, is Whoa. A, this is a water bird, and as you yeah. can tell, three fish to put that on your tableau. Oh, oh it's so very different. It's kind of eerie. Oh, very short. It's like an aggressive little. Yeah. Uh, Not... All right, let's let's each pick one more. Let's flip through some of these. We have okay. the red kite, carrion crow. Uh, I found the I found the uh, the the robin when we were playing, and I confirmed yes. that I had been able to identify that uh, that song. Oh, you found one that you're. Uh... Here, here's here's an interesting Ooh. one that I know is special to you. I'm interested in this one. Okay. Okay. What'd you find? Oh, a ruff. <laughs> Hi, ruff. We played, and this one betrayed me. I didn't realize did. that it was uh, He's not, not a duck. actually a duck. He's not really a duck. He looks very much like he a duck. He is though. awesome looking though. So during breeding season, male ruffs grow showy collars that can be black, white. Or brown. I am fascinated. To, I really am. I'm so excited to know what this bird sounds like. You know what that reminds me of? What? It reminds me of in Star Wars A New Hope, uh, <laughs> episode four, that little guy with the metal nose who's talking to the stormtroopers, troop telling him where C-3PO and R2-D2 are. He's like talking into his comm blanket. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that, that was really funny. <laughs> so I'm interested in this. The last one I want to look at, lark. the horned lark. First off, super cool. Mm, related definitely. related to a quackalope by far. Oh, of I mean, course. a horned duck, horned lark seems yeah. similar. Uh, horned larks form large nomadic flocks, mixing with other bird species, which is actually a really interesting trait because most yeah. birds, most birds don't do giant migratory flocks. Like they don't integrate very well. Now, but there right. are some breeds and species that will actually habitate and live with and really commune with other like. Whoever's around, basically. Right, and it, I mean, it goes co contrary to the saying, birds of a fl feather flock, flock together. together. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's see. Ooh, that's pretty. Ooh. So sharp. Oh, wow, yeah, that hits a note in my... I can hear that in my inner ear. Yeah. My goodness! Isn't imagine that having imagine having a flock of those around. Here's uh, I, my ears would bleed. <laughs> so 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 many of these incredible birds, and let's show off the one thing that sure, we yeah. do want to acknowledge. So, for instance, we have here the kakapau. Uh, this is going to be this flightless nocturnal parrot is endangered. It only reproduces every three years or so. We watched a little mini documentary while we were playing. There's yeah. about 150 of those left. They live on small islands over in New Zealand. New Zealand. And one of the most interesting things about this bird is it is a ground bird, a ground like bird. a turkey. Yeah. And here's the thing: when we go to listen to the sound here, it says "sorry," uh, but this song is not available for this bird. Right. Why is that? 
It's a conservation issue. This yeah. particular bird is extremely endangered. Uh, in the documentary that we listened to, there are potentially only 163 left in the wild at yeah. this point. The thing about a bird song replication is that those can be used by hunters uh, to attract birds to them, and the hunters will, will kill them for trophies, mm -hmm. for food, for whatever they want to use them for. Now, we're, uh, we're not against hunting. Obviously, people need hunting for sustenance and things like that. But, but poaching's different. Poaching is yeah. completely different. And, it's, and it's, it's sad that people, people do that, but... It's good that the bird community knows, has found a way to, at least in some small way... Mediate a bit. Make, make it a little bit... Yeah, better. so almost every single one of these birds from all of our expansions are going to be available, with the exception of a few of our flocked friends uh, that are endangered. And yeah. what I would encourage you to do, the thing that, that, you know, that we kind of did, is if you find one where the song isn't available, it's not available for a very specific reason. It's because the resource that they're pulling the audio from has indicated that that bird would be more at risk if the audio was wildly available. Right. And so we did some research. We Googled a little bit, found out a little bit more about what this bird is. It's fascinating. And, uh, and why it matters. This is, as far as we can tell, a bird that research has shown lives to 70, from 70 to 100 years. Reproduces yeah. every three, like the card says, is potentially the oldest living or the oldest like lifespan uh, bird in existence and has dated back for millions of years. Yep. And yeah. so do a little bit of Googling. If you find one that doesn't show the audio, I think it's probably worth it. It is definitely worth it. So and one, one last thing before we go. For our uh, international listeners, we're here in the United States of yeah. America, and uh, the primary language that this is printed in here is English. But is good. Wingsong, uh, in addition to Stonemaier Games, has, uh, Wingspan has been printed in many different languages. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the person who developed Wingsong has also developed it for different languages. Right now, I know that uh, German, uh, and German and uh, French are completely, uh, I think, completely uh, moved over. Languages like Italian, Spanish, and other languages, Czech, are actively being added. So if you have an international copy of Wingspan, this app could also work for you. Yeah. So... I know this is a silly, fun video. If you're still watching at this point, you're ridiculous. And thank you. Uh, but whatever the case, I, I just thought this was so cool. So I thought I'd share a little bit about it. Uh, whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Go watch some birds. I mean, board games mm -hmm. are great, but the world's also a beautiful place. It is. We'll see you next time. Thank you.